Well, here we are wearing my long johns, wearing my insulated Norfin rain suit, and that can only mean one thing. It is finally fall walleye fishing. These last few days, it has cooled off a bunch. We've had 40s, 50s, even this morning it was into the 30s. And so today what we're gonna be doing is really kind of dialing in one of my favorite bites, and that is finding these shallow walleyes on some of these sandy flats. And so this is a bite that happens on a lot of lakes. And what that happens is a lot of times this bait fish starts to push up into the shallows in the fall, and those walleyes follow. So today what we're going to be doing is we're going to be breaking down some of these areas, kind of showing you how I kind of work through these in order to find some of these fish because when we look at these on the outside, it can be kind of daunting because they can be so massive. Some of these flats can be, you know, miles long. A lot of times on the smaller lakes, they might be only a few hundred yards long, but on some of these bigger lakes like Leech Lake, Lake of the Woods, Red Lake, they're going to be miles and miles long potentially. So I'm going to kind of show you how I break those down and kind of what I do to target and find some of these fish on these bigger areas. So the first thing I want to do is kind of show you even what I'm looking for on a map. And essentially what I'm looking for is a big expansive area that is kind of either one one depth or just slowly gradually breaks down to deeper water and one of the first tips I do want to give is start broad and work narrow you know sometimes we hear of a uh, kind of a fishing report where it gives you a depth maybe it's 12 feet maybe it's 8 feet whatever it is you get so locked in on that depth that you're not willing to sometimes try some of these other depths so what I like to say is I like to start broad and work deep for example today I'm gonna start and I'm gonna think anywhere from 5 feet to 15 feet and essentially what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna s back and forth over these different areas, starting in about five, like I said, out to about 15, just kind of work all these depths until I can find a depth that is holding either more bait or more fish. So I'm gonna get moving here and kind of talk you through exactly how I break some of these big shallow areas down. I set my highlight contour from about five to 15 feet and I just work back and forth making that S pattern, like I said, and I'm mostly looking at my side imaging. I will have my live scope down as well, um, but first and foremost, I'm looking at my side imaging because that's where this really shines. You can cover some water very quickly um, and you can really, on the sandy areas where it's a little more hard bottom, these fish just stick out like a sore thumb. On this sand like this, you're definitely more so looking for that shadow as opposed to that bright return because on this hard bottom, you're getting a lot of that bright return anyways. So you're looking for that shadow where the fish leaves behind there I can see a couple only a couple they're for sure fish so I'll mark those there they are right there kind of close but just kind of plop out that way see if they want to go not super aggressive just yet there we go Picked it up right off bottom. So there you can see. Oops. So there you can see just seeing only two fish there, but seeing them on the side imaging. Quickly plop around. I haven't even hit spot lock to be honest. I was just kind of drifting back. I just turned on them. So there you go, right there. Um, didn't even hit spot lock on those guys. Honestly, I just kind of turned around quick, um, tried to pitch on them as quickly as I could. And sure enough, that one picked it up right off bottom. I probably overlaid it, but I'm gonna show you here real quick. I'm using the new Northland short shank jig um, with a rainbow. One of the things that you'll notice is there's a lot of boats kind of out behind me here. And that's another tip is just to try to get away from the crowds. Um, sometimes that's where some of the biggest concentrations of fish are. Like out here, I'm seeing two fish here, one fish there, but the nice thing about these fish, they're not hearing the boats, they're not getting pressure, they're not seeing a bunch of different baits. They're kind of out here by themselves. So they tend to be a bit more aggressive. So that's another tip for you. When you're working some of these shallow flats, there might be some areas where, you know, the typical thing that you see, somebody nets a fish and all of a sudden a few boats start coming through. Um, so it can be easy to try to go with those boats because okay obviously there's fish there but if you can put in a little extra time it will pay dividends being able to put some more fish in the boat that aren't pressured i didn't even see these guys on the side imaging oh i just saw them on the live scope almost drove right over top of them you'll see that sometimes too typically i find that i see them on the side imaging more so one of the things that i want to mention when i'm working this bait is you know i'm doing a little more snap jigging approach so i'm going to snap it up let it pendulum to bottom a lot of times I like to keep it on a little bit of a tight line because I want to be able to feel that bite because a lot of times they're hitting it on the drop. The other thing that you'll notice is I'm letting it hit bottom and then I'm starting with a little bit of a slow pickup. I start with that slow pickup because I want to see if that fish is on there to know if I'm going to need to set the hook or give it a little bit of time. So I'll start with a slow lift. If I notice that fish isn't there, then I'll give it that little snap. So I'll let it snap, hit bottom, start with a slow lift, snap, 
hit bottom. And that way when I first pick it up, I can tell if that fish is on there. There we go. Just felt that one hit it on the drop again. That little bit of a snap has been crucial. They haven't wanted it just hanging. Just want it snapping on the drop a little bit. <laughs> when you're in the shallow water like this, 10 feet, it does not take long for these fish um, to show up. I've tried putting on my chest cam a little bit, but by the time these fish are to the boat, don't really have time to turn it on. There we go, just like it's supposed to be. Just chomped. Fun bite. This shallow jig bite in the fall, there's just not a lot better. So again, kind of just essing over this, narrowed in that uh, kind of depth range to more about 10 to 12 feet and seeing some more fish, more bait. Um, so that's another tip is just really use your electronics. You know, I'm using my side imaging, my live scope a lot. Those ones showed up on the live scope for the side imaging actually, which is typically the opposite of what I see on these shallow flats. But even if you don't have electronics, you can really f dial in this bite pretty easily by trolling crankbaits. You know, you can cover a lot of water, you can get trigger some bites, and you can kind of put together a pattern of maybe a depth range or an area that these fish are hanging out. So don't let the fact that you don't have electronics kind of close you off from covering some of these big areas um, because it really is pretty easy to do. Well, those fish have kind of moved on here, so we're gonna keep moving to the next group. And so some of the things that I wanna key in on, you know, a lot of times you're gonna be going through a lot of nothingness, but anytime you're seeing some bait, you know, for example, like this on the 2D or on the side imaging or like this on the live scope, you know, that's gonna be things that are gonna be a good indicator. You might not always see fish by those, but that is a, huge, a great indicator of, you know, where you're gonna see some of this life, all this life, kind of revolves around where this bait is moving. So when you see that bait, kind of keep a note of what that depth is, um, and then you can kind of really start to piece together a picture. You can see I'm kind of chasing that bait around 20, 25 feet. Finally, basically pitched it right into that bait. And that's recording, that would be the luck for today. Finally got one of these guys to go. Oh, solid fish. This has been a little bit of a grind here for this last little bit. We uh, have been seeing a few fish, but a lot of them have been very finicky. Um, this group has finally been a little bit bitey though, at least. I've driven about half a mile. Um, haven't seen a whole lot. Few here, few there, uh, and they're in like groups of like two, maybe three, and they're just not super active. Still gonna just cover water here and try to make a few bites happen. Another tip that I wanna give you is to kind of key in on some of these irregularities. You know, maybe it's a little turn in the contour line, maybe it's a little circle. Whatever it is, some of these irregularities are typically sometimes what you see, something that a little bit different. For example, you know, I'm going over one of those right now, and you can see on the side imaging here, there's actually a little bit of maybe some of that weed, some of that shallower, weedier stuff, and that is right in kind of this circle. And, you know, you can see sometimes see some of the bait, some of the fish kind of relating to that. So, you know, another tip, find some of those irregularities irregularities and some of them might not hold it but at least drive over those as you're making your s's and that might give you a better chance of seeing some fish a couple of fish right there you can see on the side imaging again i'll zoom into those so you can see them a little easier right there don't want to get too close to them i already might have done that all right so we have those fish we should be spot locked about right we have them about 35, 40 feet off to this side. Cast out towards them. I cast it a little beyond them. So hopefully I can work right through them. I can already start to see those moving a little bit. Oh, I'm feeling some weeds down there. Again, those little low growing weeds are what these guys are relating to here. There's one, there they are, about 30 to 40. See them off over there. Pretty tight to bottom though. Oh, you can start to see them move there one bit. There we go. Hit it on the drop again. Just needing that little snap. Started working right through these fish. Man, these walleyes in the shallow water are just feisty. Whew. Almost whiffed on that guy. Boat flipped him a little too hard. 
just picking off through these groups of fish kind of one by one kind of breaking down the shallow flat this area specifically is kind of like what i said is that little bit of irregularity there's a couple little bumps a couple little circles on this very flat area and you can see there's this little bit of low growing weeds and that's definitely what these fish are relating to so I've already overlaid the rod that I'm using and so it's a six foot medium from Rosemore Outdoor Gear and the reason why I like a little bit shorter rod is I'm not making giant long casts. You know I'm relatively seeing these fish from about 30 to 50 feet and I'm able to use just a six foot rod um, for kind of casting this out there and you know if I'm gonna make bomb casts I'm gonna want like more like a seven foot rod but I really like the six foot rod because it gives me that much more sensitivity so if I can get away with a shorter rod I actually like it I know a lot of companies are going towards that longer rod um, but I am still a little partial to those shorter rods just for that added sensitivity and the reel that I'm primarily using for my jigging rods is a PC Fun Carbon X2 2000 if you're looking for any of these I have links in the description below for all these products so make sure you go and check that out as well so there I can see some on the side imaging I'll kind of mark where that is take a screenshot and then I'll flip around with the live scope, try to find these fish and cast right to them here. About 35, 40 feet that way. Yep, there we go. That one you can see left the group a little bit early. Or was on that back side of the group. Whoa, look at that pirouette. I don't know if that's what it's called. But that's what I'm calling it. Nice little spin move. A few more over there. A little more bitey here. Smaller guy, whoa. One of the things I love about the fall is you just don't get as many people out. You know, the fall, it's definitely cooler. So a lot of people are fair weather fans. Um, people are out hunting. People are doing all sorts of things. But one of the things that I have found crucial is being able to find something that makes you comfortable in the boat because you're gonna have short days if you're not comfortable. And so this actually rain suit that Norfin came out with this year has been awesome. It is the Rebel Pro and it's a lightly insulated suit. So it's perfect for like the spring and the fall. And so today, you know, in the morning, it was probably like 35 degrees. I think it warmed up to about mid forties. So a little bit chillier, but I have a sweatshirt on underneath. I have my bibs on, my long johns on, and I am just absolutely perfectly fine right now. If it gets a little cool, I might switch to more of my winter suit but for this fall and springtime this Norfin Rebel Pro lightly insulated rain suit is awesome and obviously it's a rain suit as well so if it starts to rain I am set so if you haven't already picked up a nice fall fishing suit fall and spring actually I would highly recommend looking into this Norfin Rebel Pro it's just been a perfect suit for these kind of transition times and I also have a discount code it is TJ10 make sure you go that'll save you 10% off so make sure you go use that code so if you haven't already I highly recommend picking up a fall suit like this it will just increase your time on the water and make it so much more comfortable so there's a pod right there i'll kind of zoom in so you can see it just like that try to get them a little more off to the side you can see them right about there so now that we found them we see them about 40 feet out should be pretty close to it we saw that guy going for it Yep, there you go, you hit it on the drop pretty much. That was fun right there. Ooh, a little better fish, I think. See, so saw how I was just, man, that took a little bit of time. I was just driving around this big shallow flat. Finally saw a pod on um, the side imaging there. This guy's got a little more fight to it. Basically hit it on the drop there. Let's see what we got. Saw a pot of about four or five. That's a solid fish. Oh, sweet. There we go. So you can see that one in that pot, it was about four or five. Again, not a big group. So I'm gonna kind of keep working this pattern here. If anything interesting happens, I will uh, stop and give a few more tips, but otherwise we're gonna do a little hook set montage here. I'm kind of follow it there a bit. There we go. Yes. Yep. 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 There we go. Finally, a little more aggressive here. There we go. There we go. A little bit better one here. Eater size. I'll show this one off back here quick. There we go. 
another quality fish. Well, there we go. Shallow fall walleyes. Hopefully you found some value in some of these tips and tricks on these shallow fall walleyes. If you did, I would love it if you would like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. Um, it really means a lot to me and that is what keeps me going. That's what gives me the ability to keep making videos like this. I'm planning on kicking out a few more videos here before ice up, but um, today I covered about a mile stretch. So I probably covered about a mile going back and forth, kind of essing along, um, just kind of working. No fish were really potted up, just a group here, group there. Kind of kept working through these using my electronics, using my live scope, using my side imaging to find these fish and slowly piece together some fish. And like I said, being able to be away from the groups like this really helps you to find more of the active fish. You might not always see as many, but the fish that you're going to find are typically going to be more active. So again, hope you found some value in this. Hope you learned something. Hopefully it'll help you catch more fish the next time you're out. And as always, appreciate you watching. We'll see you next time.